while since we did an update here. Uh, as you can see, all of our mechanicals are in. We're getting really close to completing our thermal envelope. We have, uh, I don't know, less than a third, less than a third of the attic space to probably still insulate. It's actually probably less than a quarter. Yesterday we hit uh, 129 bags of cellulose in our vented assembly. If you've been following along and you remember, we have a attic truss with a two and a half inch vented cavity uh, or two and a half inch vent chute over top of the cavity that we're now filling with cellulose. And it, it's not a dense pack, but the way we're installing the cellulose, it's probably gonna be closer to the settled volume or the settled density of cellulose. We keep the hose buried in the cellulose the entire time we're blowing in and we try and shove the cellulose down as we go. And our bag count is right around an R80. Uh, the reason we keep track of our bags is because it allows us to calculate the volume that we've installed versus the volume of space we're trying to insulate. And we can get, we can figure out our R value based on that. What I'm gonna go with here on this building though is I'm gonna go with simply, we've got an R70. And the reason for that is I know we've got almost 22 inches of space up there, but it's not quite 22. So we'll call this 21. That gives us R70. Now there's ways beyond just counting the bag that I could quantify this as an R80. I could do a density test. I could take a couple of core samples of the attic, weigh the cellulose, figure out the density and say, yes, we're like R76.5. But realistically speaking, R70 is a really good nominal R value for climate zone 6A. Um, we're doing very well on our thermal assembly. Again, we've got R20 below our slab. We got R35 for our foundation walls. We're, a no these are all nominal by the way. So we've got R22 inboard. We are R9 outboard here. So we're R30 plus for our wall. We're gonna be R70, R70 plus for our attic. Um, it's a really robust thermal envelope. Could it be better? Absolutely, it could always be better, but every project has a budget. So, you know, this is pretty good house on steroids. We got a little overzealous doing our shear wall or doing this side of the shear wall, and we got ahead of ourselves. So behind here is actually outdoors. Now, even though you can see, and we pulled this two by four down because once you forget one thing, you have to verify that you didn't forget two things. And we already had our Myrex taped and we have a floppy bit that actually passes through to the other side and is taped to the plywood because we're using our plywood as our air control layer on the attic space, essentially on the other side of this wall. If you remember, the roof is like this. So we have two mono slopes, but from about here to about here is actually outdoors. We forgot in, again, being a little overzealous and completing the shear wall to insulate this little strip here. Really, we only have to insulate to about here, but the blocking's already in place, so it just makes sense to insulate the whole thing. So sometimes you have to go backwards to go forwards. So we had to pull a couple pieces of plywood off and about a dozen nails here just to verify that our air control layer is complete and a couple of pieces of plywood to ensure that our thermal layer is complete. Shouldn't have forgot this, but I did. Um, the key thing is you never judge anybody by the mistakes they make you judge somebody by what they do about their mistakes. So we've made a mistake here, we fixed it, and we're moving on, starting to insulate our rim joists. And I have a little checklist that I like to go through when we start insulating. I like to check our electrical, I like to check all our mechanicals. 
I wanna check our electrical plan. I wanna check our plumbing plan. I wanna check our HVAC plan. I wanna count the number of penetrations we should have. Anything going through the rim joist and wanna make sure that they're all there. So I like to start in the utility room because typically that's where we have the bulk of our penetrations, uh, at least the big ones. So service entrance is coming in. We've got the generator panel. We don't have our intake and our exhaust for our ERV here. So that is missing. I know over on the other side, we've got our hose bib. We've got the penetration for that. And there's probably a few other things missing here once I start going through. Makeup error. I know we're missing the makeup error as well. So I wanna stay out of this area and I wanna make sure all these penetrations are done before we insulate and seal off our rim joist. If we get ahead of ourselves and we start insulating this area too soon and we seal it off before some of the other trades have had a chance to catch up, then we're doing work twice. We're gonna have to take it apart, we're gonna have to redo it, and typically when you're insulating and air sealing, uh, installing any type of vapor control layer, it never gets done as well on the repair as it did initially. We have an S11 installed here. We're putting some sensors in some various locations in this build in hopes to, you know, gather some data. So this is a north facing wall. You can see I'm right against the back side of the R9 zip and I'm installed into a piece of panel edge blocking. So if you remember, if you've been following along, all the, all the panel edges are blocked on this build. And for the most part, they're nailed off three inches on center. So it's gonna be interesting as time goes on, we're gonna measure temperature, relative humidity, and we're gonna track what's going on in the north wall. This is the upper part of one of the tall walls on the north side. And we're gonna have another sensor lower in the north wall. We're also gonna have two sensors in the south facing wall. So we're gonna get a comparison uh, between the north and the south. We're gonna install a sensor in the south wall relatively at the same height as this one. So it'll be interesting just to see where things end up and uh, track what's going on over time. Hopefully we can get these all up and running today. Hey guys, um, over here at Aaron's awesome project site and I'm helping out installing a, a uh, temperature and humidity sensor uh, into the uh, we're going to measure the temperature and humidity at the south rim joist. So yeah. the sensor is already connected. The gate it's, re, it's pushing data to the gateway. Um, we validated all that and now we're just going to install it in its final location. So Jeff just finished installing the last S11 sensor. Now this sensor is going in essentially behind the blocking at the same level that the rim joist for the future deck is going to be going in. So not only are we gathering more information inside the wall at the southern exposure, but it's also kind of an alarm. It's behind the deck ledger. It's directly below the largest opening on this build. So if for some reason, you know, somehow we've missed some type of detail in our flashing, whether it be for the deck ledger, uh, a detail for the actual patio door, something is missed, the relative humidity is gonna spike on that sensor, and we're gonna notice and we're gonna say, hey, something doesn't add up here. So even though this shouldn't happen, it's cheap insurance, um, and I think maybe down the road, and I think this is part of what Jeff is hoping to put together, is we're gonna see a lot of builders, you know, let's spend a few hundred dollars on sensors and a few hundred dollars on a gateway and let's see what's going on inside our building. Trust, but verify. Mm -hmm. And what's easier to fix? Something when you know you have a leak or when the leak has already presented itself. Essentially stuff is already rotten or started to rot. Uh, nobody wants to go back and fix their own work, but I'd rather fix it while it's still relatively inexpensive to fix.